So um, I did a little introduction for you, Marisa, <laughs> and I'll just run through it again so that um, you, you, you can hear what I say. Um, so Marisa is an eco-artist painting wildlife, climate change and renewable energy subject matter. Um, she has explored environmental issues through painting and digital composite from the peat bogs of Cumbria to images of concentrated solar power for her home country of Pakistan. Marisa is also working on a book, which sounds really exciting. And Marisa explains in her own words that this is about the relationships of several of my creatures. And some of the images are of attempts to work out which style to use for the illustrations. There are tight, intricate ones or more flowing ones with Chinese brush, ink and wash. I think I'm going for that today and I'm going to do some with permanent ink as maybe the flow is too great. So I'll hand over to you, Marisa, and you just let me know when you want me to move on to your slides. Okay. Marisa, you're you're on mute. Right. This is a digital work. It's um portraying the absurdity of Australia carrying on relentlessly with coal mining when they're suffering from terrible forest fires and you've got the coal miners and I've captioned it might as well just chuck it straight on the flames so you've got the coal miners throwing the coal in the fire and the firemen trying to put it out and the poor animals trying to escape and I just sort of when I saw those terrible forest fires in Australia, it made me want to do a work of art of it. And I did it all in Photoshop. And that's part of my eco art. So you could do the next slide. This is, this is in the same theme. It's called Digging Up the Dinosaurs. I'm not sure how clearly you can see it from the image, but it's of um, dinosaurs underground and the red going up through the symbols symbolize oil wells. And then there's clouds of dinosaurs puffing out flames. And again, it's a digital work. And uh, I, I saw a program of David Hockney doing trees on his iPad. so quite inspired by that. Okay, so the next one. This is one I did a while back. It's quite a sort of stylized one. It's um, transposing the desert tech concept of putting solar power stations across North Africa, which would power North Africa, the Middle East and the whole of Europe which for various reasons hasn't happened. Um, maybe the oil companies weren't so keen on doing it. But anyway, I've done one. The green shape is Pakistan, which is at the moment suffering terrible floods. And there's a, there's a solar disk getting the energy and the red lines are a power grid or Pakistan, and then the water is the waste product, and then the vegetation is what you could grow with the water. So that was my, that was a, an exhibition in Pakistan called Redo Pakistan after the Kashmir earthquake. And I don't think they followed the, the idea, but anyway, keep trying. <laughs> and the next one, The next one is um, of one of my parrots. Now that's quite stylized and complicated drawing showing um, one of my parrots that's going to be in the book. And I'm working on different ways of painting the sketches until I'm happy with the illustrations for the book set of real creatures in the new forest. 
Okay, so that's that's quite an intricate one with with a waterproof pen and um, watercolor. Okay, next one. That's doing it much freer, and I think I prefer it. It's um, the ink flows into the colors because that ink isn't isn't permanent. I've just done a couple with permanent ink. And I think I prefer it with the impermanent because it all sort of flows. It looks a bit maybe messy, but I quite like the, the effect. Okay, next one. That I should have had with the climate, with the other um, ones on eco art. Um, but anyway, it's uh, one showing I did for. Um, a climate action group and it wanted to show the bad things and the good things and you can see all the bad things there's people filling up their petrol uh, airplanes galore power stations loads of coal people grieving people being hungry uh, creatures not doing very well and um, that's, that's all the bad stuff. But the good stuff is um, the green semicircle and the orange circles and bit of circle you can see at the top symbolizes solar energy. And underneath the blue symbolizes the sea. And those are things you can put at the bottom of estuaries. You could put quite small ones that will generate power. They have a couple around, but that's, that's symbolizing one of them. So that, that was the, that was the, it was a big, big banner. I'm not quite sure where it went, but I, luckily I photographed it. Okay, so next one. Now this again is a very intricate uh, drawing and, colouring in of a, a, it's a globe artichoke and it's got bees on it and coming on it. I do, um, I do these monthly allotment workshops for Green Christian because my family has an allotment that I help a bit with and uh, I help mostly by <laughs> not cutting the globe artichokes and taking photographs of them and painting them. That's mostly my contribution, but um, they're, they're very good to, to work from. But it's very, very intricate. And I'm trying to move towards a more freer style. So I have the next style, the next slide. Yes, that again is quite, um, quite a tight drawing of, uh, of the pig and parrot. Um, it's um, a relationship that um, is of a sort of conglomeration of pigs and parrots actually. It started when my daughter was 16 and she wasn't terribly interested in the guinea pig. I bought her oh, yeah. of guinea pigs. So I, um, one of my parrots died. So I put the, I put them together and they got on really well. Uh, so that's uh, that's the basis of the book. And that's quite a tight drawing. So the next slide, that's a much looser one. You can see it's um, it's just running inks and watercolors all blended in together. And um, I've been putting these up on TikTok and Instagram. My grandson has shown me how to do these things. <laughs> so they're, they're going up there as I as I do the the drawings, and um, they they seem to be fairly popular, so that's good. Okay, next slide. This is um, a foal in the new forest. This lady took me out in her jeep because I'm quite disabled. I can't sort of walk out there, and. Um, she let me 
photograph all the youngsters and their parents and I took I took reels of photographs because the pig and parrot are going to live in the new forest with the ponies so that's so I'll be painting a lot of ponies as well as guinea pigs and parrots for the book. Okay, so the next one. That's a lot of them. Yes, that's the last one. Remember All right, well, you can leave it on that. You can see it's a, it's um, using a Chinese brush and non-permanent ink and Rembrandt watercolors. I really like Rembrandt colours and I have them in a, um, oil and watercolour. Um, they're so vivid, they're really concentrated colour and um, well they're not so vivid on this because I'm I'm just um, doing a sketch but um, for more detailed drawing or painting they're really great. I love their oil colours too. I do a lot of oil paintings. I haven't put any in for this one because um, I'm sort of working on the book and I want to, I've got to learn how to do Adobe in design to format the book. So I've put on one of the things um, you're thinking of having workshops for Illumini and I'd like one on Adobe in design. And I'd also like one on how to write a book because I have written a draft, but I'm not sure it's very good. And I'm not really a writer. I mean, I've written millions of reports and things, um, but I'm not, I'm not a sort of a writer as such, but I need some help. Is this the first time you've written a book, Marisa? No, I did write one when I was 10, I remember. Not quite sure where it went. It's called The Wave. It was based on my voyage from Nigeria. We were evacuated with the Biafran War. Um, I was living there at the time and we went on the banana boat and it was all about that. I suppose I could rewrite it one day, but I, I'm not quite sure where it went. <laughs> These are really lovely uh, sort of works that you're progressing for the book. They're really interesting. Thank you. So I don't know if we have any um, comments that have come up in the chat, Beth, that we can- Yeah, enjoy. yeah, we've got quite a few. Shall I read them out? Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. Yeah, so we've got, um, Kevin says, these are great with great stories. Uh, I said such strong messages, wonderful work. Lorraine said, I particularly like the one with the coal miners. It's a really clear message. Uh, Dima said, these are very beautiful metaphors, very strong. Lorraine said, the intricacy of the first parrot is lovely, but I also like the way the colors flow in the second one. Uh, Dima said, your work with planes, very impressive. I said, the symbols are really strong. Lorraine said, you've got a real gift for storytelling. A picture really can say a thousand words. Kevin said, really strong message, very intricate work. Um, Tom said, Marissa, beautiful, powerful ink on your parrot, vibrant and zestful colours. Your images around climate are powerful and a strong message. We are creating our own demise, I suspect. Ellie said, love the gold effect this has. Um, I said, so interesting to see your work change. Um, and Tom finally said, lovely image of the foal, beautiful work and mark making. Lorraine says, the foal picture is done in an unusual way. I like the way the outline leaves a gap between the painted bit. And then finally from Dima, your technique is very good. All of these sketches and big works. Oh, thank you everyone. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. 
Oh, really lovely comments. And I just wanted to add the artichoke flowers, beautiful, because uh, my husband had one that he picked for me last week from the allotment, and that's amazing. When, when I saw your image of that, I was like, I'm sure that's an artichoke flower, and then you said it was. So, um, And they smell incredible. They smell like honey. I don't know if you've ever sort of smelt them, but they just are incredible flowers. Yes, just to tend to leave them for the bees. We don't eat many, we leave them all for the bees. Yeah, oh, they're beautiful. 